So hi, it's Dr. Scott. I ran into my former student, Cynthia, at a, fac at a Foothill faculty development event. And we haven't seen each other in a very long time. Yeah. And it's been the most beautiful reunion. And I wanted her to tell you the story before I lose track of her again. She's been at Berkeley and it's wonderful. So yeah. tell the story, tell the story. Go what back story away. am I telling? How we met and, um, and where you went from there. Okay, I had um, Professor Langford for English. I forget which one, but I remember that class, the challenging writing and his essay Hall of Fame and your <laughs> blogs and your feedback and just grappling with my writing. Um, we thought it was about 2008. Did, did we think that? Yeah. Around then, like around 10 years? 2008. 10, 10 yeah. years, or roughly 10 years. Let's yeah. say roughly 10 years. And I guess I also, what I share with you is that just the great advice you gave me about. Yeah, I like the story. Yeah, about thinking about going on to grad school and some of the interests that I had uh, when I was toying with either being president or studying philosophy or English or art history or music history, wasn't quite sure I was going to do it all. And we had a really good conversation about, um, I don't know, can I just say it, some of the biases and some of the disciplines in um, higher education. Biases which, and battles. Yeah, and at the time, I didn't realize um, those battles because I, Foothill was so... I didn't experience that here. I felt so in, I fell so in love with academia, and um, and you you sort of talked to me and encouraged me to think about the battle and and the entrenched um, interests, uh, interests yeah. right, and perspectives of some of the disciplines, including art history, and it became much more meaningful to me than I ever imagined. So I went on to Berkeley. Um, I was going to study medieval art. I ended up studying, emphasizing in kind of French romanticism, but looking towards colonialism. Wow, yeah. And um, got the departmental citation for my honors thesis, which I was very happy to make sure that you so knew that. So proud of you. Thank you, with all of your feedback. Those don't come easy at Cal no, either. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. It was Especially really when hard. you're writing something that, that sort of critiques your professor's lifelong positions. In How some did ways. you know? That's what I was telling you about. Those are the biases and the battles. That's exactly what right? my thesis was. We have top was. 10 tips about how do you oh, win, how do you win yeah. academic arguments? How do you disarm naysayers? This is what this is all about. Yeah. And it's the real thing. That's what I did. And this is also the future of the fields that you're in, though too because if, if those entrenched institutional biases have to be removed and we have to fight those fights and they're yeah. worth fighting and they can be done they can be done they can, it can be, be done. empowering and I will say that um, even though there were times that it felt like a battle there were, the support was also there yeah so I was a McNair scholar yeah. I got funded to do research I got support from a tenured faculty at UC Berkeley yeah and um, became a much stronger writer. And I think I really found my voice. I really yes. found my identity as um, an academic, actually. So those battles formed the research that I went on to do and who I am in the classroom in terms of being inclusive, in terms of being an advocate, in terms of bringing the margins into the center. So, um, and you were definitely an important moment. So. Yeah, those con those yeah. office hours conversations can be life transforming. So have them, and, and all I'm thinking, you know, I'm, of course, I'm puffing up with mass pride over here, and I'm yes. quite happy to should. be flattered on camera. But I'm also thinking about my own mentors, and the way yeah. that we that this is handed on and handed on, and the video that you will make someday with the students that you have now. Yeah. And that that's this is one of the hidden joys of education is that we we do really literally pass the torch. And that these ongoing, these ongoing struggles. I mean, these are civil yeah. rights struggles, these are intellectual struggles, these are conceptual struggles, these are theoretical struggles, and they matter and they can change the world. They can. But you also have to have the patience for them, and the, and, yeah. that, and that's beautiful to see at this point in my career, to have students coming back, who are, who are now themselves professors, right? Yeah. And this is a beautiful thing for me. And I see it as, um, you know, there were scholars before me and uh, there were scholars right. that will be after me. And I feel like um, that we all lay down a stepping stone and then the path 
those stepping stones start to get closer and closer and start to really create a path yeah. um, for everybody and for belonging ultimately. That's right. So that we can all um, uh, feel that these stories of our collective um, experience and culture belong to all of us. Yes. Well, as they should. Thank you for coming back to Flint Hill. Thank you. And thank I'm you so for being be you. Here. And thank you for, for letting me tape this little of message course. to the future. Message yes. in a bottle. Message to the you, the future professors. Exactly. Yes, exactly. you, the future professors. And keep keep it up. All right. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay.